Hello and welcome back to Jehan's Better. I'm your host DD and joining me today once again is my friend and your co-host Vedant. On our new segment Jehan's Better, we talk about Jehan Daruvla's weekend in F2 as we follow the Formula 2 circus around the world. So let's grab some chai, take our seats, ready your opinions and dive right into the conversation. A pretty decent weekend for Jehan, a little disappointing uh because of the early safety car and the alternate strategy that Jehan was on the sprint race. But otherwise um uh, another consistent weekend from our boy in blue our boy in red our boy in red well yeah. the car is blue because yeah sorry yeah blue sorry sorry my bad my bad <laughs> yeah but yeah definitely i mean uh, i think jehan is the only driver in formula 2 right now to have three podiums from all three weekends and he's third in the construct- third in the championship behind <laughs> behind uh, uh, Theo Pocher, Theo Pocher and, and uh, Felipe Dragovic. Absolutely. So it's looking good. It's looking bright. And I mean, he had pace throughout the weekend. He had race pace throughout the weekend. Qualifying was not so good, but yeah, positive weekend. So overall. so he's so he's basically like Mick Schumacher, right? You know, doesn't qualify that well, but uh, has great race pace. Yeah. absolutely <laughs> yeah, i guess <laughs> that's that's great news that's great news uh but yeah like you said uh you know uh it it was a tricky qualifying condition obviously for the uh, f2 folks um but even then you know he he put it in the top 10 uh had a great great race uh, had a great sprint race uh, is what i meant to say uh, almost got marcus armstrong but you know um marcus armstrong did do a really really good job to hold back jehan uh, throughout the race uh it seemed at one point that both of them were going to run out of tires but uh, yeah. thankfully uh, that did not happen and both of them did finish uh, 1 2 and jihan's teammate dennis hogger also had a podium finish so for the first time uh, prema finishing 1 2 in f2 this season um, which is sort of, sort of weird it took them five races to do that uh, but regardless uh, jihan does have 36 points on the board uh, 16 points behind championship leader theo pocher which will come come back to later but let's talk about De- jehan daruvla and his consistency in in so in the season so far uh, and i think the only person you know beating him on consistency is filipe dragovic uh, who's had a good points haul every weekend yeah absolutely i mean jehan has not made any mistakes you know liam lawson has been consistent yuri vips has been relatively consistent but jehan has but both of them have made mistakes this weekend and lawson even made it made a mistake no yeah this weekend both of them made mistakes lawson had an unfortunate pit stop last weekend sorry but uh, yeah jehan has not made any mistakes he might you know again he might not be qualifying that well but in terms of putting things right in the race and not making any mistakes using those tires correctly and using his prema car and the brilliant brilliant engineers properly he has put every step right in the races so it's it's i mean it's it's for the long run we have the longest formula 2 season this year and it's going to be absolutely brilliant till abu dhabi yeah and uh, we have learned you know uh, consistency is key in formula 2 if you want to actually be a championship contender let alone uh, the winner but um, again you know talk, talking about jehan i feel uh, you pointed out that he has three podiums from the from the three weekends you have had so far uh, i think what what will be important is that he converts those podiums uh, into either wins on sprints in sprint races or you know has a better starting position and converts po- uh, you know points finishing places into podiums uh, on feature races, races because the sprint yeah. races don't give out that many points uh, and which is why he's 16 points behind uh, someone like theo pocher who's only really finished two races but he has won both the feature races he has finished and yeah. <laughs> has only two points outside of that uh which goes to show that you know uh the amount the reward that there is to uh, finish in the podium places in the feature race yeah i mean if you win the sprint race you get 10 points which is equal to finishing fifth in the feature race so and which is 15 points behind the winner of the feature race so you can see the difference right there and obviously you know i think the first step for jehan is obviously to qualify in the top 10 every time which is happening right now except for that 
disastrous qualifying in Jeddah, which where he had a faulty part, broken part, but he has been qualifying in top ten. Uh, even in his Carlin days, you know, he did qualify in the top ten a lot, but now next step, I guess, is to qualify in the top five or top four to get that brilliant starting position in the in the feature race. And from this weekend, we saw that even the pole sitters and even the you know front row, second row guys have bad starts very often, basically. So if he does not have a bad start, if he gets a decent start, which he did in sprint in the sprint this weekend, he can have a very very exciting position by the end of lap one. Absolutely, and uh, I, I I can't wait to see what Jehan can bring in in the upcoming races. Obviously, uh, F2 is not going to Miami in a couple of weekends' time. Uh, I think we'll see them in Barcelona next. Yeah. So uh, there is some time in between for them. Uh, I don't know if there's any testing that they'll be doing, but hopefully, you know, uh, Jehan will be able to continue this streak uh, coming into Barcelona. But talking about good starts and bad starts, we have to talk about Roy Nassani. <laughs> what a start for Roy Nassani in. In the feature race, in the feature race, and then he led for most of the race, but and it seemed like he was going to take an uncharacteristic win, but then he took a very characteristic Roy Nissani yeah. like <laughs> characteristic uh, DNF, uh, you know, towards the end of the race. Uh, what happened there? And and he was not the only one to you know make that mistake where he got onto the curbs and then tried to you know power out of it, but ended up in the wall. I think. Um, Logan Sargent also ended up doing something similar, uh, or I might be, might be mixing up because there's quite a few blue cars on the grid. Oh yeah, there's a lot of blue, and uh, but yeah, absolutely. I think Roy Nissany was the net leader after the soft starters pitted, and going for the his going for his first Formula Two win, he might, you know, to. I mean, essentially, book his not his spot, but redeem himself basically for his long formula 2 tenure i think he's the oldest formula 2 driver right now and he has the most formula he has been in formula 2 the most or something like that but he has had sessions of practice sessions with williams which everyone which no one liked he even had testing pre-season testing with williams last year when they had only three days which no one liked so he could have redeemed himself with a Formula 2 win of sorts, but yeah, disaster. Not not what Absolutely. he was looking for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and talking about disaster, what a disastrous, we- disastrous weekend uh, for Yuri Vips and Liam Lawson, you know, crashing out in the feature race. They were both, uh, it seemed, uh, they were up for good points. And Yuri Vips had a, had a bad weekend throughout. You know, he qualified well, but then had a really bad start in the sprint race, I believe. And then uh, the feature race, yep. he just uh, knocked himself out. Uh, so, yeah, don't know what happened there from one of the guys who we, are, who we have been expecting uh, to be one of the championship contenders. I but, mean, absolutely. Uh, and, let's... you know, that's, that's what I was talking about, that consistency is key because Yuri Webbs and Liam Lawson are touted to be better championship contenders than... Jehan, right? And than anyone else. But they are not consistent. They are making mistakes and there they are. I think Yuri Vips is a handful of points behind Jehan and Liam is just, just beside Jehan in the points table. So it's it's going to be interesting all the way we know that, but yeah. Yep. Uh, but big dub, big, 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 big dub for uh, Enzo Fittipaldi, who took his maiden podium in F2 from 15th on the grid. That just goes to show how chaotic that feature race was. Uh, you know, overtaking Boshong and Logan Sargent uh, during the race, which, and, you know, we all know it's not easy to overtake Ralph Boshong. Uh, he is one of the most difficult defenders. I don't want to say mo- one of the most skilled defenders. Uh, well, because his tactics are dodgy every now and then, but he's definitely one of the most difficult uh, defenders in F2 at the moment. Yeah, I mean, kudos to Fit Enzo Fittipaldi. Converting P15 on the grid to a podium is difficult, whatever the situation may be, whatever the strategy may be, right? But since you brought up La- Ralph Boshong, let's talk about him. He has had 
good pace throughout the season he has been competitive throughout the season but and we know that he is very driven because he has worked so hard to be in that in this position but every so often he loses that pace in the race and you know i mean i i i support ras boshong solely for his story and uh, not solely for his story but his story is very motivating and you know i support him but to see those mistakes to see the occasional lack of pace and letting away letting go of the position is very heartbreaking i i can't i don't know how much more of that i can take it's it's definitely painful uh you know uh like you said given the story uh yeah it, it does seem that he struggles midway through the race we saw that in jera too and then he tried you know going off basically taking a shortcut through the first chicane in jera and then got penalized uh i think twice for that uh if if i remember correctly uh, definitely once but twice for that while defending from i think ayu moivasa and uh a couple others so yeah definitely uh it seems that he's he's I I would have if I had to guess I would say he's struggling with the tires so there is some learning to come from there but uh it's not his first season is it so um again his experience should come into play at some point uh hopefully hopefully we'll see that uh you know in in the next few races um but that that's really it uh from my side Vedant uh anything else you want to talk about about the F2 grid uh well nothing much I could not I mean I I did see both the races but I could not follow them because of poor internet connections but uh, yeah I think you know it's it's a staple for me to comment that formula 2 is going to be very exciting this season and whatever but the next two races mind you are Barcelona and uh Barcelona and Monaco now Barcelona everybody knows all these drivers know Barcelona s- pretty well they have like the back of their hand yeah their yeah they have raced there many times in different series they have tested there many times in different series and then we have monaco the mm-hmm. not the crown jewel in formula 2 but a difficult race and tough to overtake and very incident prone race so the next two races are going to be pretty exciting as formula 2 always is but it's going to be very important for all the drivers to perform well and grab those points because now that we are into the season and getting into the season properly the rhythm and the form would become key right so it's yeah yep and qualifying will be key in monaco like it usually is so hopefully prema will uh, get the shit together by then and we'll see jehan take pole uh fingers crossed but yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you for joining me vedant uh once again it was great talking f2 with you um hopefully we'll see some more news from f2 in the future uh and uh, we'll bring it all to you so we'll catch you on the next one